Hi. So in 1976, Popular Electronics published uh, a new microcomputer kit called the Cosmic Elf. Um, this was a uh, very primitive computer with only 256 bytes of RAM and with the only method of input being um, toggle switches and the only output being two hexadecimal LEDs. Nonetheless, this kit cost about $80 or so. Um, which was far cheaper than the Altair computer, which came out about a year earlier, uh, which was also a kit and also rather primitive, but definitely not as primitive as this device here, and far more expensive. Um, the good news is you can have a Cosmic Elf in this day and age with modern components, um, and here we have the membership card by uh, Lee Hart and it's a really nifty device um, it's got the same functionality as the ELF it's not emulation it, it actually has a CDP 1802 CPU in there which is the original CPU for the ELF um, it does have however 32k of RAM instead of the measly 256 bytes but it uh, relies on a row of LEDs for output instead of the two hexadecimal uh, LEDs in the original device. It also has uh, signals brought out to a DB25 uh, connector um, in order to uh, facilitate uh, interfacing. So you may wonder why would I want to use something like that in this day and age. Well, uh, this device is as close to bare metal as you can get as far as programming is concerned. It's even more primitive than an Altair. Um, but it will teach you assembly language, it will teach you binary uh, notation, um, and uh, it might even teach you interfacing. Um, and it's really fun. It comes as a kit. It's super easy to build. It's all uh, through-hole components, so very simple construction and inexpensive. Uh, and it's also extremely portable. It runs on three AA batteries and can run for almost a year on just these, these batteries. You can put it in your pocket and uh, go on a trip and you'll have uh, a device to work on if you get the computer itch at some point. Now of course um, the this computer can be expanded into a much uh, more capable computer um, something like the uh, ELF 2000 which is uh, uh, created by uh, Spare Time Gizmos um, and this is essentially a uh, an ELF on steroids. You can still use uh, the st switches to enter data as in the original. Um, it has an expanded set of uh, hexadecimal LEDs. Um, it does have a serial port on the back so it can connect to a serial terminal and you can use that for input and output instead of the uh, of the switches and it has also a an ID interface um, CF based so that um, you can actually uh, have a hard drive on it and um, you can program it using Fortran basic uh, and assembly and it has actually a disk operating system as well and finally it has also a composite output here um, with circuitry to go with it which will allow you to display graphics on a composite monitor so a really, really a nice uh, computer kit. This comes as a kit um, and really fun to play with. Unfortunately, this is no longer in production and has not been for a while, um, which is too bad, really. And I hope they do bring up uh, uh, production up again. But in any case, um, this is uh, at this point just uh, for comparison with the... Uh, early version which is the membership card. So just to give you a, uh, a feel of how it is to program uh, the membership card, um, let's go ahead and enter a, a small uh, Hello World equivalent uh, program which basically will um, toggle what we call the cue light which is uh, this LED here uh, when we press the input button which is this little thing over here and when we release that button the LED light will go off so you press it it goes on you release the button 
the LED goes off and so on and so forth. So this is a kind of a hello world. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, first we're going to go ahead and connect uh, uh, the battery pack um, to the uh, membership card. There we are. Uh, make sure all the switches are set up. Um, and we reset the memory and we're ready to go. So this is all binary, so I'm just going to enter the codes here. So 3 and F. As you can see, when you toggle the switches to, uh, to a certain uh, number, uh, binary number, the corresponding uh, LEDs will light up. And this is the least significant bit, and this is the most significant bit. Uh, next is zero, 0, so all zeros. Then 7B. After using it for a while, you start uh, um, basically become very comfortable with binary notation. Next is 3, 7. And 0, 3. And 7A. zero and lastly zero zero there we are this is done so we reset and now if I press the uh, the input button over here the LED the Q light here should light up here we go so we run and when we press as you can see the LED it up. Hello world. Yay. So this was only a few bytes uh, to enter and you can probably imagine how um, difficult and uh, tedious it would become if you were to enter several hundred bytes. Um, so there has to be a better way and thankfully there is. So here's a uh, TI-99 for a computer and I wrote um, in uh, extended basic um, with uh, some minimal assembly support a uh, very primitive two-pass two, uh, assembler for the CDP-1802 instruction set which is the CPU at the heart of the uh, ELF computer. Um, and um, this allowed me to basically use a text editor to enter uh, a program in assembly language and then use the assembler to assemble it into binary code which I can then send to uh, either a printer or to a file or even directly to the ELF itself. So um, let's just uh, quickly uh, demonstrate how this works. Alright, so first let's go ahead and uh, use the text editor to uh, write a, the hello program again, this time in assembly language. So we'll go ahead and uh, load the Predator editor, which is my favorite editor on the TI-9948 computer. Okay, so we're going to start with the label. Um, the uh, assembler assumes uh, six characters for labels, then a space, then four characters for the opcode, another space, and then up to seven characters for uh, an operand. And then anything up to that is a comment. Um, this spacing is the standard scheme on the TI uh, editors in general. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to wait for the input switch to be pressed. So um, we're going to use the BN4 instruction and uh, basically this uh, instruction uh, will continue branching until the input switch is pressed. So branch or not input switch basically um, is what it means. And we're going to branch to back to the start instruction. We're going to keep looping until the input switch is pressed. The star before the uh, the uh, label over here 
um, is a requirement by the assembler uh, and simplifies um, coding um, and basically indicate that this operand is actually an address. Okay, so once the input switch is pressed, we're gonna go ahead and set the Q light or the LED. So with the instruction SEQ. So now the LED is lit. Then we're gonna wait for um, the input switch to be released. So let's use the label wait. And this time we're gonna use the before instruction, which basically will keep looping while as long as the input switch is depressed. Um, so we're gonna loop back to the wait label while the input switch is depressed. Once it is released, then we can turn off the um, Q light with the uh, reset Q light. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and jump back, basically branch, to the start. And that is all there is to it. Finally, we have to end our code with the end opcode um, so that the assembler knows that we were done. That's essentially all there is. So as you can see it's a lot easier to understand and to type in when it's in text rather than binary. So we'll go ahead and uh, save the program to dsk5.hello. Okay, that's done. So we'll go ahead and exit. So we're going to go ahead and uh, this time load uh, Rich Extended Basic, uh, which is a variant of Basic with some expanded uh, features. Um, and we're going to run the uh, ELF ASM program, which is the assembler. seconds all right so we're gonna go ahead it's gonna ask for a source file so we just saved our dsk5 dot hello so we're gonna load that and it's gonna ask me to list the screen send to printer save to file or send to the membership card um, for starters we'll go ahead and just uh, send it to, to the screen so we can see what's going on. So the first pass it will read through the file and uh, basically list it and also check for the validity of the opcodes and the uh, operands. Make sure that you have an operand when one is required and that the opcode is actually valid. And it will also create a reference table for all the labels used so they can be referenced with the jumps. And the second pass, it'll actually assemble it into a hexadecimal. Uh, this is the line number, um, this is the opcode, and this is the operand. As you can see, it's uh, fairly slow, but uh, that's primarily because extended basic on the TI-99 for a computer is super slow because it's a double interpreted language. It's a, a long story, um, maybe for another time, but uh, take my word for it, it's very slow. It does a job though. So the job though. So here we are. Um, assembly is complete. And um, normally you wouldn't just list it to screen. You would probably print it uh, for a hard copy or save it to a file, or even better yet, just dump it straight into the ELF, which is what we're going to do next. So we're going to run the program again. But this time we're going to go ahead and connect the ELF first. All right, so now we are uh, connected to the TI um, via a ribbon cable, uh, which goes from the uh, DB25 on the ELF computer to the back of the uh, peripheral expansion box and into the parallel port of the TI. Um, there are only basically 10 lines here on this connector that I need. I need a line that uh, triggers the input switch and 
eight data lines and then ground really simple so we'll go ahead and demonstrate the process so we'll go ahead and uh, enter in the source file again the sk5.lo and this time we're going to go ahead and send it to the membership card so it load up uh, a small uh, set of assembly utilities that connect to the parallel port um, and it will send me a reminder here uh, about connecting and the setup of the switches okay we're all set press a key and it's the first pass is is essentially uh, the same everything is the same um, so I'm gonna go ahead and while it's doing that I'm gonna go back and uh, look at uh, what the elf is gonna be doing so on the first pass nothing is happening alright now it sent the first opcode it's the second pass that's the third opcode and that's it the program is basically in place so all we have to do is reset and now if we press the input switch the Q light should light up and it'll turn off when I turn off when I release the switch here we go hello hello and that's basically it um, this obviously will become uh, much more handy um, once uh, the programs get larger um, but uh, it's also fun <laughs> in any case I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration and uh, feel free to leave uh, questions or comments as you see fit thanks for watching